Hi, I'm Amanda Clark. I'm an advanced accredited practicing dietitian and I'm the creator of the Portion Perfection System for weight management and for post-bariatric surgery. I want to spread the word about a problem with vitamin overdose that I'm seeing quite commonly amongst my clients. And the problem is vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin and it's involved in nerve and immune function, in healthy red blood cell production, metabolism of food into energy, and also mental function. You find B6 in cereals, eggs, and legumes. It's often used for heart health, for morning sickness, and for PMT. Consuming vitamin B6 through food, even in excessive amounts, appears to be quite safe. And it's safe in supplements in appropriate doses. But too much is very bad. Typical symptoms of B6 toxicity include lack of muscle control or coordination, painful skin lesions, nausea, heartburn, sensitivity, lightness, numbness, and reduced ability to sense pain or extreme temperatures. The most prominent symptom or diagnosis that comes from B6 toxicity is peripheral neuropathy. And in fact, it can result from B6 deficiency as well as from B6 toxicity. The Therapeutic Goods Administration here in Australia is aware of recent reports, both in Australia and overseas, which indicate that peripheral neuropathy can occur at a daily dose of less than 50 milligrams a day of vitamin B6. Now, the recommended daily intake for vitamin B6 is somewhere around the 1.5 milligrams. Um, the upper limit of safety is currently set at 50 milligrams, but here the TGA is identifying that maybe that's been set a bit too high. It's very common for vitamin B6 to be added to some other supplements. Specifically, you might find it in iron supplements. You might find it in supplements aimed at improving energy. And so sometimes it's a problem when there's supplements that are describing an outcome rather than a ingredient, because you may not be aware of what those ingredients are. Magnesium is another one where often there's quite high doses of vitamin B6 added. I commonly see this at the 50 milligram level and 50 milligrams is that upper limit. In 2020, the TGA said it was reviewing the problem and they've subsequently specified a product containing more than 10 milligrams of B6 must be accompanied by a warning label. So I welcome that introduction, but I'm also very aware that people often don't read warnings, but they trust that something that they're buying off the shelf is quite safe. A friend of mine, Jan Johnson, has experienced peripheral neuropathy from overdosing on vitamin B6. I spoke to her about her experiences. So Jan, can you tell me how you came to be aware of the problem of peripheral neuropathy? They, they, were, they were tingling in my feet. How long had they been tingling in your feet? Oh, it was on, I didn't measure anything, but it, it happened in 2016. Inquired for them to, to tell me why I have that, that tingling and that, you know, what causes it and is it going to go away? Okay, and they sent you for a blood test. Now, because I've known you a long time, I know yes. that you've always had all those vitamins on your breakfast table. <laughs> yeah, I did. Tell me, why did you take so many vitamins? Because I wanted to get rid of my arthritis. It's interesting that um, your pharmacy actually had a list of all the vitamins you were taking. Did, yeah. So that makes it very easy for me to see where that excess came in. Right. And I can see that you were taking a mega dose B vitamin. That's right. And you were taking a multivitamin and that multivitamin yeah. had a particularly high level of, of vitamin yeah. B6 in it as well as the, the mega mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Now, even just looking at the ones that you were taking from the pharmacy, mm -hmm. um, they would be enough to result in the, um, in the symptoms that you've got yeah. from there above the upper limit yeah. Of, um, yeah. of safety. So how does the peripheral neuropathy affect you now? Yes, I, can't, I can't walk without a walker and did really badly and I'm really limited as well because I get too tired. 
Jan, what message would you have for for listeners? Research everything properly before you take it. Yeah, that uh, just because something's over the counter, it doesn't yeah. make it safe, does it? It doesn't, no, not at all. Yeah. How many years would you say that you were taking uh, those vitamins? Right, it would be for at least 10 years, if not more. Now, vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin, and so you often think that it's just flushing through. But the damage can be done on its way through by having that in your system for so long, and it may not flush out in 24 hours. Um, for Jan, it took about three months, and that's quite common that levels can return to normal quite quickly. But often the damage has already been done. So I urge you to take a look in the vitamins on your shelf. Look specifically for vitamin B6, but there are other dangers to be had when you're taking multiple supplements. You can have them reviewed by an expert to look at the safety of the levels you're consuming. This is specifically a problem I'm starting to see in the bariatric surgery community. Vitamin B6 is not a nutrient that we consider to be particularly at risk after bariatric surgery. So it's not one that, that is placed in high doses in vitamin supplements. Um, but it's worthwhile checking the level in yours. Remember that the recommended dietary intake is around 1.5 milligrams. We're a bit unsure of the reason for the high levels of B6 that we're seeing. And it may be to do with changes in gut bacteria because vitamin B6 is a nutrient that can be produced by gut bacteria. So there's still more to understand from that. But I want everyone to be aware of the other supplements that they're taking. I certainly do sometimes find people taking a mega B or an executive B because they're feeling stressed at a particular time or they're taking magnesium, which um, can send you over the level. You might also want to look at any fortified products that you might be buying or, or consuming. Um, energy drinks can be a significant culprit, particularly as the portion size increases. You could be looking at between one and nine milligrams in a serve, as well as um, VLCD products or weight loss shakes and breakfast cereals. Um, some are very low. So I encourage you to check your supplements and also to ensure that before you have um, blood tests that you cease your supplements for 24 hours before the test so that we know that we're not just measuring what you've taken that morning or the night before. Stay in contact with your dietitian because we'll probably know more in the near future about what's causing that. Okay, so stay healthy.